What's up, AFL Fantasy Freak fam? With the round one, the AFL season now completed, there's plenty to talk about. For those that are new round here, I'm Jacob, aka AFL Fantasy Freak. In this video, I'm going to be going over my round one review, how I went, uh, what I scored, where I'm ranked, and then just a few takeaways from the round that I gathered this week. Let's jump straight into it. So to kick things off, <laughs> as you can tell, I'm pretty happy. Uh, obviously, my goal this year is to finish in the top 100 in AFL Fantasy, and I've put in a lot of effort this preseason. I uh, took a lot of risks, uh, which I traditionally don't do at the start, and a lot of those paid off. So I'm sitting pretty uh, ranked 159, I think my score was 2,049 points this week. A couple decisions that uh, really enabled me to get a jump on a lot of the competition was I identified early in the preseason that rucks this year weren't going to be the scoring play. And so I opted to spend... Uh, limited money in my ruck department in order to get cash into other areas where I thought points could be scored more freely. This led me to have Matt Flynn on the field, who actually top scored for the rucks this week. Um, obviously, that was quite lucky, but uh, not having Gorn, not having Grundy, that obviously enabled me to get a lot of cash elsewhere and that resulted in me picking up guys like Merritt and McRae who went on to get quite big scores this round. Some of the highlights for me, uh, Oleg Markov was absolutely spectacular, Nick Hind, Andrew Brayshaw. So those three in particular were just a few guys that were relatively unique and all all tunned up for me, so that helped my score tremendously. Obviously, there were still a few things that I got wrong, so a couple of the bad calls I made were, I started with Tom Atkins. I originally had Dom Tyson from North Melbourne. Uh, I was a little bit worried that he wasn't going to get named on the Sunday, so in order to get someone that I was content with, I had to make that call early. And so I switched him to Tom Atkins. Now, Geelong got pumped with pressure by the Crows and they did not really have the opportunity to score freely on the outside at all. Uh, so that resulted in Stewart having a poor game, Clark having a poor game, a lot of the outside players or people that rely on cheap possessions, intercept possessions, that just wasn't there. So I'm expecting Geelong will bounce back this week and guys like Jordan Clark, Tom Stewart, they should be able to score a bit better. I took the risk with Atkins and he's one that is on the chopping block for me only because whilst he has the halfback role, he doesn't look like the type of player that looks to utilise open space and get into marking positions, which for me is something that needs to be highly looked at when selecting a defender this year. I also think that he's going to be playing lockdown roles on some of the better small forwards. And I think that he's in defence more as a defensive-minded player than someone who's going to attack, utilise space, get cheap possessions, that sort of thing. So I'm in a luxury position this round where I don't have Rao, I don't have Dangerfield, and therefore, at the moment, fingers crossed, we could get some news coming out throughout the week, but right now I'm relatively free in terms of what I can do with my side. So he'll be one that I'm looking to get rid of because he's super unique and I'd rather get on a more popular player. So 
at the moment, I'm looking at going him to Jai Coldwell. Jai obviously has the midfield role, plenty of CBAs, tackling pressure was immense, obviously has upside, and he's one that I should have started with, but I didn't. And so I'm going to rectify that decision this week by jumping on board now. And hopefully he continues to score somewhat decent, which I'm expecting him to do, and he should generate quite a bit of coin for me. Darcy Parrish was another guy that I wasn't too impressed with. I thought in the Amy series, I was really impressed with him. He played a lot of midfield time. I thought with Rudden taking over that it would finally be the year where Parrish would get unleashed in the midfield and all indicators pointed to that in the preseason. I thought Dylan Shield would maybe spend more time at half forward um, and that would allow Parrish to get the opportunity inside. Unfortunately, the real season did not match up with the preseason and he looks to be spending a lot of time forward in a role very similar to what he was in last season. I think they have Merritt, they have Shield, Coldwell, McGrath, Devin Smith is going through there at times. There's just a lot of names that Essendon are throwing through the middle. And I think Parrish is going to spend more time forward than he is inside. So he's one that I'm potentially going to hold this week just to get another look at him. But if he continues to stay in that role, whilst he will get dual position status, he's probably one that I'll be looking to move sooner rather than later in order to get on some better value picks early. Jordan Degoe, that was obviously a bust. Uh, as much as people were criticising his performance, I personally don't think Jordan was that bad. I think a lot of his scoring has to come down to them as a team and their performance. So Collingwood got absolutely pumped by the Bulldogs. They lost the possession count by 150. The midfielders got pumped and... They didn't have the ball in their forward half a lot of the game, despite this, what the scoreboard said. They really got absolutely demolished. So he didn't get any opportunity forward to set up when he was forward. And when he was in the middle, he couldn't get his hands on the footy. So I think if Colin would bounce back this week, we can see a uh, bounce back into Goey's scoring. I think if you've got to Goey and you're in a position where you have forced trades such as Rao, Dangerfield, or potentially you've missed out on a couple of the rookies like Goulden, Jordan, James Rowe. I think Dugowie is a safe hold for now. I think he should bounce back. If you're in a position where you don't have any forced trades and you've got all the rookies I mentioned earlier, then I think that it is acceptable to change Degoe to, to someone else as Degoe's now got a break even of 99. Even if he scores well, he's not really going to generate any cash for the next few weeks. Whereas if you were to jump off now onto a guy like Caldwell, you could potentially generate a lot more coin quicker and therefore benefit your team in the long term. So... That leads me to my moves and what I'm looking to do uh, with my team this week. So I'll flash my uh, current trades up on the screen. Obviously, very early days, there's a lot of news still to come out. So with my trades, I kind of like to spend the week getting a good picture of what's going on uh, go through all the numbers, all my spreadsheets, and really just try and identify trends, identify players early. I think uh, I'll be looking to jump on Jai Caldwell, obviously one I missed. And the other one is uh, Jaden Stevenson. I'm not 100% sure that he's the guy I want yet. Um so I'll need to do some digging into the numbers. 
and have a look at a couple other factors. But I'll be posting a trade article up on my website, letting you guys know what targets are the best to bring in, what guys you should be looking at, all the uh, rookies and that that you need to have. And I'll go over a few different scenarios. So that'll probably be coming out midweek. So stay tuned for that. In terms of what I saw over the weekend, so very much similar to what I saw over the preseason games, what I had expressed in my preseason videos and articles is that I thought the tempo of the game was going to be a lot faster. It was going to be less contested, less tackles. Overall, it was going to be poor for Ruckman because there's less long down the line opportunities, less Ruck contests and greater for defenders with the speed in the game, more handball receives, more kick mark. And so that very much looks to be the style of footy that we're seeing. And I expect that to continue uh, very much in the early part of the season until teams come up with different strategies and different ways to deploy different tactics. So I think up until around round five or six, we should see the same sort of pattern, the same sort of consistency. And therefore, I think it's wise to have your money invested more in your defenders and maybe your midfielders compared to your rucks and your forwards. Obviously, if you have got Max Gorn or Grundy, I think if you've got both, I can consider possibly trading one down and using that cash elsewhere. But at the end of the day, you decided to take that path of going set and forget, and it's set and forget for a reason. So whilst I expect their scoring to dip and they will drop in coin, they'll still be the number one and two ruck at the end of the year. So I think you just got to hold strong and accept that fact and use your trades elsewhere to better your team in other positions opposed to just side-raising or downgrading and, and burning a trade on a guy that you expected to keep for the whole year. So that's just a little bit about what I saw from, from the games this week. Uh, that's what I'm doing with my team, possibly. Uh, obviously, that could change at some time. That's how I went, that's how I ranked. Overall, I'm very pleased with the start I've had. Uh, obviously, it gets me into a fantastic position and having avoided carnage such as Dangerfield, Rao, and starting with all the top rookies, it really puts me in a great position to fix my side. A couple, couple guys that I got wrong, I can have the opportunity to rectify that from the start and it puts me in a really strong position going forward. If you guys have enjoyed this video, make sure to drop it a thumbs up. Leave a comment down below if you've got any questions. Subscribe to the channel if you want more content. And until next time, guys, keep climbing up the ranks. I'm about my pledge, bitch, I'm decked up on blue bills. And I won't stop until the cash pit look like fall leaves in a bag fill. Tell her out of my face if she coming with that bullshit. Quit to save my peace, I'm so after school special. She brainy.